He said he wouldn't. It's that simple. That what will happen, he could change his mind. He's a free agent. He's negotiating his appearance, perhaps. Maybe he's negotiating his appearance with Rupert Moloch. And he's telling Moloch, I want to see the questions this time. And if she asks me another one to set me up like I'm the fool, I'm walking off. Or you're going to put in writing that she won't ask me this question. How's that? And if she does, you lose $40 million per question. Right? I mean, that may, he's negotiating. He's a businessman. He has every right to, to go there and not be set up. So I think we've covered this. We've covered the waterfront, right? I'm, I'm trying to find desperately they're looking for the Schumer interview. Well, would you rather I talk about the Zika virus and what you can do to defend your immune system against any viral infection without a guarantee that you won't, you know, be infected? There's no guarantee about diseases, let me tell you that. There's always a mysterious element. However, there's some common sense things we can do to stop the Zika virus, and that's quarantine all travelers from Zika-infested nations. That's a tried and true piece of methodology from epidemiology. First rule of epidemiology is control the source of the epidemic. But since we no longer have a CDC but an ODC, an Obama Disease Control Center, where everything has to go through him, every other agency now has to go through him and him and his minions to tell you what's real and what's false. Best-selling author, epidemiology expert Michael Savage explains the origins of viruses like the Zika virus and their impact on the, impact on the U.S. now, diseases without borders. It's a huge story. We're gonna hear, you're going to hear more about it as time goes on. Yesterday, I talked about there are no Vikings anymore. Michael Savage newsletter, there are no Vikings anymore. In today's issue, the latest attack in Europe by Middle East migrants, the stabbing of a Swedish social worker prompted Savage to wonder what has happened to a once great civilization. The incident, he said, and the hundreds of cases of assault reported across Europe in the last month won't stop the Swedish government from continuing its immigration policy. Savage said there are no Vikings anymore. The Vikings are in prison. All of the good Vikings are in prison in Sweden, run by a bunch of ninnies and sissies, like all of the ex-great Nordic nations. There are ninnies and sissies running Norway, Sweden, Denmark. And in Italy, the great Italy, oh, the Italians will stop them. Yeah, the rugged Italians. What rugged Italians? What rugged Italians? There's an invasion of 400,000 new immigrants coming in the next few weeks to Italy. Take a look at them. If they look weak to you, you're crazy. They're immigrants from Somalia. You better lock your women up behind closed doors in Italy. That's all I can say. Where are the leaders in Italy and Sweden and Norway and Finland? Where did they go? Why are they afraid of the sissies and the ninnies who have told them that they can't stop the immigrants? Of course you can. Your ancestors did. That's why you had a nation with great cathedrals, great art, great music, great science, great achievements. Cities built because of your ancestors. And look what you've given away. Just what's happening here in America because of Obama. Nevertheless, that's what's coming unless we get someone to stop it. Catch up on previous issues of the Michael Savage newsletter. These are the gems. They capture the gems in the middle of my monologues, and they put them into the newsletters. They're really good. And then I wake up the next day after saying there are no Vikings anymore, and I read this in the Business Insider. It says, a Swedish official <laughs> wants to use taxpayer funds to help ISIS soldiers come home. Fund programs which help returning ISIS warriors Warriors, they're calling them, reintegrate into society. In Sweden, former jihadists are coming home and being offered psychological help to overcome traumatic experiences they may have suffered while fighting in Iraq and Syria. Liberalism is a mental disorder, I've tried to tell you. Okay, so you know all of this. Everyone knows everything. And then you, all you want to do is, tr is talk about Fox and Megyn Kelly and Trump. All right, that's what you want to do. Eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. Let's go to Catherine on KSO. Catherine, what's on your mind? What's your topic? Doctor Savage, would you please give it a one minute or two, please, for your dog? If you were just informed by your veterinarian without enough time to aware of what's happening. Number one, I have not understood any of your dog's situation, but this pulling of all the dog's tooth. <sighs> okay, I am the cardiac sonographer. I know about this regurgitations of the valve in the left side, left side is not at least going through the walls, the left to right situations, but I know that we are not even understood what the morphology chambers into the left side. This is all the matter of if not, if we're not even understood what the cardiac heart rate is for the normal dog or the human. Oh, it's, it's too late already. Here's a picture of him walking around now. The vet just sent me a picture, a video. Teddy's shaking off the anesthesia. He looks better than me on a Saturday, uh, Sunday morning. Here, just came in. Thanks for your thought, but the teeth are gone already. He's coming home. I'm going to give him rice later. If I go to dinner, he'll have to eat some mashed potato. I'll have to be like a mother bird 
chew food up for for the rest <laughs> for the rest of his life. No, I'm so happy he's alive. You have no idea. I'm a lit You don't know. I've been for two hours. I've been on the air. <laughs> because I'm a, I'm a, this kind of guy. The dog was in surgery. I was worried about him. I'm freaking out, telling him to send me stuff. So the vet says, wanted to see you how great Teddy is doing after his surgery. Right? And there it is. There he is marching around. Hey, go, Teddy! So right after the show, he comes home. I give him a kiss. Oh, he's limping around. I want to save this. I want to keep playing it over and over again. Just wanted you to see how good Teddy is doing after his, after his surgery. The toothless lion. <laughs> he looks like Bert Lahr marching around. People confuse him with a pet lion, a little guy. I, a lot of guys love little dogs. They're so beautiful. Shows you you can survive even. Well, they left his canines in, so at least he looks like a dog. He's trucking around there. Should I put it up on the Facebook? I, I'll lay, I should send it over to Facebook so everyone can see Teddy's doing well. But I don't know. The feeding now, the whole deal. What are you wasting our time, Mike? We want to hear about Trump. Don't talk about anything else. Who has this? Peter just sent me Schumer. According to this, you interviewed Schumer on February 17, 2006, 2.15 2 p.m. Would you take a note of that, Jim? Freerepublic.com. Oh, they have it. So I send it up to Doug, and we'll get the Schumer thing tomorrow. That'll be a treat for tomorrow. So all of you uncompromised purists can see that you do have to reach across the aisle to get something done that's significant. Otherwise, you're just whistling in the dark and talking to yourself and 4,000 cronies. 855-407-282, which I think I said 4,000 times. White Lives Matter, American dissidents killed in Oregon. Zika confirmed in L.A. Uh, Trump attack for leaving Fox debate. That's, again, anything. So all we're going to hear is Fox debate, Fox debate, Fox debate, Fox debate, Fox debate, Fox debate, Fox debate. No, 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 no. I'm going to raise money for the Oregon family uh, of the man who was killed. I, I haven't set it up yet. I'm so busy with the me and the dog and the this and the that. Uh, that, 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 do. You know, how much can one man do? I will do it. We will raise money for them. I will set up a box. It'll go up on World Net Daily. It'll go into the Savage Legal Fund because I'm set up with, I think, PayPal. I have that still set up. Or the, yeah. And then people can send money, and I guarantee you it'll go to them. These are poor white people. The government will try to do everything they can to intimidate them and kill them. They not only killed one of them, they arrested the others to destroy their lives and take away their farms and their ranches. We're going to help them. We're going to fight this evil, dirty, filthy government. You want to fight the government? Don't argue over Trump versus Cruz. Stop it. Stop falling into the trap of the Democrats. See, if you buy into that, you're falling. You couldn't do a better job for Hillary Clinton than right now than demanding that Trump and Cruz debate each other. That is the stupidest thing I have ever heard in my life. No one dares say it. I want you to think about it. You have a winning team, a great winning team with terrific people on it, and you have two standing, and you say, now, strip naked in the arena and tear each other apart, and who's ever left standing, rip, rip apart, go and fight Hillary Clinton after you rip to pieces by the other guy. That's smart. That's really intelligent. That's really intelligent thinking. That's why I oppose such a debate. Maybe you disagree with me. Okay, you're entitled to it. But am I not entitled to my opinion? Well, I hope so because I just gave it to you. Back in a minute. You know, we hear about a dissident movement in Iran that used to exist until John Kerry made nice with the murderers in Iran. And we were saying you should support the dissidents in Iran, and they were all imprisoned or killed, tortured to death and killed. And yet here in America, we had a peaceful group of pr protesters assailed by the U.S. government yesterday. Oregon State Police killed one of them, and there has been no outcry from from anyone so far as I can tell. We're all focused on Megyn Kelly and Donald Trump. This is a huge issue. And a friend of mine, Dr. Sarfati, just sent me Lavoie Finicum murder videos from YouTube. I haven't opened them because it's in the middle of a show. I can only do so much at once. But there's audio testimony. Shot with hands in the air. Eyewitness audio testimony here. Burns, Oregon shooting, militia alert, shortwave broadcast. Download these links. It's a huge story. And I know many of you don't care because... Well, they don't look like you. They're not metrosexualists. They don't drive a uh, an appropriate car. They wear cowboy boots and cowboy hats, and they're militia members. But they're they're Americans too, you know. And uh, you know, ranchers' lives matter. But I don't hear any 
any outcry. I really don't. So we are setting up. Carol Shumley just emailed me from World Net Daily. Hold on one minute. I'm very excited right now. Teddy's alive. I'm going to see him in about an hour, half an hour. The show is going great. Trump's going to win. I mean, things are good. What, should I not be happy? I'm feeling elated inside. So she said to me, please send me some original comments about your fundraising drive for the Oregon family if you have time. And if someone at WorldNet Daily doesn't write a story on your on-air reference by the time I start my work, I'll write one up first thing. You can send it any time, maybe 530. Feel free to go as long as short as you like. So I'm going to do it. I already sent it to my lawyer and everyone else in during the break to set up a box. This is what we do. I, I work quickly. I told them to set up the box, a fundraising box, a legal defense fund for the ranchers that were oppressed by the federal government and the Oregon State Police. The fear I have is they will try to ruin them, take their life savings, take their ranches, and put them in prison. I'm not going to let that happen if I can stop it. I'm very focused on this. And so we'll have that up maybe by tomorrow. You can start sending money into the legal defense fund, and then I'll find out which lawyer is representing them. And we'll work with the lawyers. I want to make sure the lawyers don't rip them off. I've had enough experience. The only good lawyer I know is my lawyer, Dan Horowitz. The others, forget about it. I spent a lot of money in my life, like, uh, you know, without result. Let's put it to you that way. Back in a minute. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Okay, what I'm about to read to you is something that was written by the Associated Press, which is a wholly old, owned arm of the Democrat socialist Islamist machine in the White House. This is something that you would see in a third world dictatorship. I would say shame on the Associated Press, but I've come to expect propaganda. Here is their headline. Just in time for you to have no sympathy for who the government executed. Here's their headline. Rancher killed in standoff vowed to die before going to jail. You hear the lie? A member of an armed anti-government group who was killed in a traffic stop in Oregon vowed a few weeks ago that he would die before spending his life behind bars. You believe this? Lavoy Finnecom, a 55-year-old rancher from Arizona, died Tuesday after law enforcement officers initiated a stop near the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge in southeastern Oregon. It's unclear what happened in the moments before the shooting or if Finnecom or any of the other activists involved exchange gunfire with officers. Authorities wouldn't say how many shots were fired. Eight occupiers were arrested, including group leader Eamon Bundy. Finnegan also was a leader of the armed group that took over the refuge January 2 to oppose federal land restrictions and object to the prison sentences of two local ranchers convicted of setting fires. He was a prominent presence at the refuge and frequently talked with reporters. His affable but passionate demeanor made him a popular subject for on-camera interviews. Finnegan seemed to have made up his mind about how his role in the occupation was likely to end with his death. Just a few days into the occupation, he came barreling to the refuge entrance in a federal truck. Rifle in hand, Finnegan sat in the middle of the driveway telling reporters gather around him that he learned there was a warrant for his arrest and he wanted to make it easy for federal agents to find him. At the time, he said he didn't know what the warrant charged him with, but he believed agents would try to arrest him soon. I don't think it really matters. There's enough things they could make a warrant for us, I believe. Finnegan said he had neither threatened nor harmed anyone during the occupation. I have grown up loving the fresh air. I love the elements, and this is where I'm going to breathe my last breath, he said. I'm not going to spend my last days in a cell. This world is too beautiful to spend it in a cell. He then gave a message to his family, so they're implying that he wanted to be killed and that he actually committed suicide. I would say whoever wrote this article, you should rot in hell. That's what I would say. You should have worked for Joseph Stalin or Adolf Hitler. This is no longer journalism in America. We have no journalism. What we have is Megyn Kelly and propagandists like Megyn Kelly in every aspect of the mainstream media. Make no mistake about it, we're living in very dangerous times. I think someone said that a grand jury could indict a ham sandwich. You can shop anything to any grand jury you want and they could indict a ham sandwich. The federal government indicted these people for no crime and then executed one of them to send the message from Boss Tweed in the White House. That's it in plain English. Now, many of you are very alarmed by this, as you should be. You should be very alarmed. I had a close family member who was a very strong person call me extremely agitated over this murder by the federal government. I had to calm him down. And what I said to him was this. I said, my friend, listen very carefully. Do you know what the bonus march was? He said, no. I said, well, 
Old Mike Savage remembers the bonus 